Hi, this is Jimmy Backflow. In this presentation, we'll analyze the test results of the first check valve of a reduced pressure principle backflow prevention device assembly. The test of the first check valve consists of two parts, a tightness test and a static pressure loss assessment. The tightness test of the first check valve is conducted by closing the downstream shutoff valve. The first check valve static pressure loss is conducted by measuring the differential pressure across the first check valve. RPZ test standards. The reduced pressure principle backflow prevention device assembly shall meet certain standards, such as the first check valve shall hold drip tight and have a static pressure loss across the check valve of a minimum of 5 PSID. The second check valve shall hold drip tight as well against back pressure and have a static pressure loss across the check valve of a minimum of 1 PSID. The relief valve shall open before the static pressure drops to no less than 2 PSID. The differential pressure across the check valves and relief valve opening point as a valid test shall be measured in a static state. Note, the stated static pressure losses across the check valves and relief valve are the effects of the minimum tensile strength of the check valve and relief valve springs. RPZ no flow validation test results. What does it indicate? The no flow validation test confirms that at the time of the test, one, a static state existed, water was not flowing through the RPZ, or two, a dynamic state occurred with a downstream demand and water was flowing through the RPZ. This case also indicates that the downstream shutoff valve is not drip tight or was not closed during the test procedure. The no flow validation test also confirms that the backflow prevention device assembly test was conducted to demonstrate that the backflow prevention device assembly is providing protection and meets industry standards. The RPZ first check valve tightness test. The reduced pressure principle backflow prevention device assembly shall be in a static state to evaluate the tightness of the first check valve. To attempt to create a static state, close the downstream shutoff valve with permission. No, it cannot be confirmed at this time if the downstream shutoff valve closes drip tight. It only can be alleged. However, the static state of the reduced pressure principle backflow prevention device assembly is evaluated during the test procedure. No discharge after closing. After closing the downstream shutoff valve with permission, if water does not discharge from the relief valve, this indicates that the first check valve is holding drip tight and the tester can continue with the test. The tightness of the first check valve will be validated and the static state of the backflow prevention device assembly will be assessed as the test proceeds. There is also the possibility that back pressure is present and a downstream shutoff valve is not drip tight, but the second check valve is drip tight, creating a static state. This condition will also be evaluated as the test continues. Discharge after closing. If water constantly discharges from the relief valve after closing the downstream shutoff valve, this indicates that the first check valve is not drip tight. The closing of the downstream shutoff valve created a static state. Since the first check valve is not drip tight, high pressure inlet water is now flowing into the zone downstream of the relief valve. The water pressure in the zone is now equal to the inlet water pressure with the assistance of the relief valve spring. The equalization of pressure causes the relief valve to open and discharge water to re-establish a differential pressure across the first check valve. Since water is discharging from the relief valve, no further testing can be completed. The test is over. Record the results. The first check valve must be cleaned, replaced, or repaired before further testing. Back pressure is not a concern since the downstream shutoff valve is drip tight. The results of the RPZ discharging after the downstream shutoff valve is closed. 
The relief valve discharges water because the high pressure inlet water is passing through the not drip tight first check valve into the low pressure zone downstream of the first check valve and relief valve. When the zone pressure is the same with the assistance of the relief valve spring as the inlet pressure, the relief valve opens. Since water discharged from the relief valve when the downstream shutoff valve was closed and the relief valve was not discharging water when the downstream shutoff valve was open, this indicates that the downstream shutoff valve is holding drip tight. Therefore, closing the downstream shutoff valve created a static state. The relief valve was triggered when a static state was created by closing the downstream shutoff valve and the not holding drip tight first check valve. Since water did not discharge from the relief valve when a dynamic state existed, the tester can conclude that the relief valve is working correctly. Therefore, the RPZ is still providing protection. The tester cannot measure the differential pressure across the first check valve if water is discharging from the relief valve after closing the downstream shutoff valve, since the pressure downstream of the first check valve is atmospheric. The test is over. The first check valve does not comply with the standard and should be recorded as such. Note that since the relief valve was working correctly, protection is provided by the RPZ. Water discharging continuously from the relief valve upon arrival. Suppose the relief valve discharges water continuously upon arrival to test the reduced pressure principle backflow prevention device assembly. In this case, this indicates that the zone water pressure, the pressure between the check valves, is equal with the assistance of the relief valve spring to the inlet water pressure. Thus, the relief valve discharges to compensate for the lack of sufficient differential pressure between the first check valve and the relief valve. The increased water pressure in the zone results from the not drip tight first check valve with no downstream demand or the not drip tight second check valve with back pressure present. Note, intermittent discharge from the relief valve would indicate a fluctuating inlet pressure event, downward drop, or a water hammer disc compression issue increase in the zone water pressure. It could also be a relief valve failure. Note, Water will not discharge from the relief valve when there is a downstream demand unless the relief valve is malfunctioning. Assessing the cause of water discharging out of the relief valve upon arrival after closing the downstream shutoff valve. If water is discharging continuously out of the relief valve upon arrival, the initial deduction would be that the first check valve is considered not drip tight with no downstream demand. To validate this inference, close the downstream shutoff valve with permission. If the relief valve continues to discharge after closing the downstream shutoff valve, open test cock number four. After opening test cock number four, if the relief valve stops discharging, this indicates that the first check valve is not drip tight. No, test cock number four flow rate shall be equal to or greater than the flow rate coming out of the relief valve. Assessing the cause of water discharging from the relief valve upon arrival without closing the downstream shutoff valve. If water is discharging continuously out of the relief valve upon arrival, the initial deduction would be that the first check valve is not drip tight and a static state exists. To validate this inference, Without closing the downstream shutoff valve, open test cock number four to create a flow through the RPZ. The relief valve will not discharge if the RPZ is in a dynamic state. After opening test cock number four, if the relief valve stops discharging, this confirms that the first check valve is not drip tight. However, if the relief valve continues to discharge water after opening test cock number four, this indicates that the first check valve is not causing the relief valve to discharge. Therefore, it is likely that the relief valve is malfunctioning or the second check valve is not drip tight and back pressure is present. Note, to simulate a flow rate through the RPZ, test cock number four flow rate shall be equal to or greater than the flow rate coming out of the relief valve. Upon arrival, 
and after opening test cock number four, water continues to discharge out of the relief valve. Suppose the relief valve continues to discharge water after closing the downstream shutoff valve and opening test cock number four. The flow rate from test cock number four is equal to or greater than the flow rate from the relief valve. In that case, this may indicate that the relief valve is malfunctioning or the second check valve is exposed to back pressure and not holding drip tight, allowing high pressure water to enter the zone causing the relief valve to trigger. A back pressure assessment test should be initiated to assess this condition and eliminate one of the noted possibilities. If back pressure is not present at test cock number four, the relief valve is malfunctioning and the cause of the discharge. However, if back pressure is present at test cock number four, this may indicate that the downstream shutoff valve and the second check valve are not holding drip tight. To evaluate the condition of the second check valve, close the upstream shutoff valve. If water continues to flow from test cock number four, but not from the relief valve, the second check valve was holding drip tight against back pressure. In this situation, this indicates that the downstream shutoff valve is not drip tight and confirms that the relief valve is malfunctioning. This statement is valid given that the first check valve and upstream shutoff valve are both drip tight. Evaluating back pressure with the downstream shutoff valve closed. Back pressure evaluation step one. Connect a standard pressure gauge equipped with a bleed valve arrangement to test cock number one. First open test cock number one. Next open the pressure gauge bleed valve arrangement to bleed out any air. Finally, close the gauge bleed valve arrangement once the air is removed and note the pressure reading at test cock number one. Back pressure evaluation step two. Close test cock number one and remove the pressure gauge. Next, connect the same standard pressure gauge arrangement to test cock number four and open test cock number four. Next, open the pressure gauge bleed valve arrangement to bleed out any air. Finally, close the gauge bleed valve arrangement once the air is removed and note the pressure reading at test cock number four. Results. If the pressure at test cock number one is greater than the pressure at test cock number four, back pressure is not present at test cock number four. If the pressure at test cock number one is lower than the pressure at test cock number four, back pressure is present and the downstream shutoff valve is not drip tight. Note, if the relief valve continuously discharges water, it may be necessary to close the upstream shutoff valve to evaluate back pressure. Water discharges intermittently out of the relief valve due to a drop in the inlet water pressure. As the inlet water pressure drops, the RPZ anticipates a backflow condition which causes the relief valve to discharge. The relief valve discharges to re-establish a differential pressure between the inlet and zone water pressure. Once a differential is re-established, the relief valve stops discharging. The drop in the inlet water pressure causes the relief valve to discharge water intermittently. The relief valve triggers when the inlet water pressure drops to the difference between the first check valve spring and the relief valve spring rating. This difference tolerates some downward changes in the line water pressure. Water will discharge out of the relief valve intermittently due to increased outlet pressure. As the outlet pressure increases due to a back pressure condition created by a pump startup or a quick closing downstream valve resulting in a water hammer occurrence, the increased pressure pushing forcefully against the second check valve causes the disc to further embed into the disc seat. This is known as disc compression. The embedded disc causes the zone area to decrease, thus causing the zone pressure to increase. 
if the zone water pressure rises to within the inlet water pressure minus the relief valve spring rating, the relief valve triggers and discharges water to the atmosphere. The relief valve discharges to re-establish a differential pressure between the inlet and zone water pressure. Once the differential pressure is re-established, the relief valve closes and stops discharging. The relief valve triggers when the zone water pressure rises to the inlet water pressure minus the rating of the relief valve spring, but in no case shall the rating of the relief valve spring be less than 2 psi. Note, the relief valve may not discharge water to discompression if the zone water pressure does not increase to within the inlet water pressure minus the rating of the relief valve spring. RPZ, first check valve differential test. The industry standard states that the first check valve shall hold a minimum static differential pressure of 5 PSID. The differential pressure across the first check valve is measured by taking a pressure reading on the upstream and downstream side of the check valve after initiating preliminary test procedures such as but not limited to flushing the test cocks and closing the downstream shutoff valve to create a static state within the backflow prevention device assembly. To measure the differential pressure across the first check valve using a three valve differential test kit, connect the high pressure hose to test cock number two and the low pressure hose to test cock number three. Upon opening the test cocks and bleeding out the air, the static differential pressure reading shall be 5 PSID or greater. The differential pressure across the check valves shall be measured when the RPZ is in a static state to validate the performance of the RPZ to provide protection. When measuring the differential pressure across the first check valve using a three valve differential test kit, the relief valve discharges water during the bleeding process. To measure the differential pressure across the first check valve, connect the high pressure hose to test cock number two and the low pressure hose to test cock number three. Open the test cocks. The test kit gauge is now reading the differential pressure. However, the air must be purged from the test kit and hoses before recording an accurate reading. To purge the air, first open the test kit high control valve. The issue. After opening the test kit high control valve, water discharges continuously out of the relief valve and the vent holes. The discharge stops when the high control valve is closed. Cause. Opening the test kit high control valve temporarily diverts the line pressure from the sensing line, which keeps the relief valve closed. Closing the test kit high control valve re-establishes the line pressure to the sensing line, closes the relief valve, and stops the discharge. This occurrence does not affect the test results. Therefore, the tester should continue with the bleeding process and proceed with testing the backflow prevention device assembly. Record the differential pressure reading. Issue. How to prevent the relief valve from discharging water when opening a test kit high control valve during the first check valve bleeding process. Note that the discharge does not impact the test results and the tester should continue with the test procedure as outlined in the options below. Solution, option A. Close the test kit high control valve. Closing the test kit high control valve resupplies line pressure to the sensing line, closing the relief valve and stops the discharge. Continue with the bleeding process and record the differential pressure across the first check valve. Option B. Open the test kit low control valve first. Keep it open while opening and reclosing the test kit high control valve. Lastly, reclose the test kit low control valve. This sequence of bleeding prevents the relief valve from discharging during the bleeding process. Record the differential pressure across the first check valve. Note that the pressure loss in the sensing line could also result from a partially blocked sensing line, causing the relief valve to open 
due to the undersupplied pressure initiated by the bleeding process. Inlet water pressure is necessary to keep the relief valve closed. Cleaning the sensing line may reduce the possibility of a discharge from the relief valve during the bleeding process if partially blocked. The relief valve discharges water occasionally when measuring the differential pressure across the first check valve. Suppose the differential pressure reading on the test kit gauge dropped and the relief valve discharged water but immediately stopped while measuring the differential pressure across the first check valve. The relief valve discharging indicates that the zone water pressure with the assistance of the relief valve spring was equal to the inlet water pressure due to the drop in the inlet water pressure or water hammer. The change in the zone water pressure caused the relief valve to trigger to re-establish a differential pressure across the first check valve. If the test kit needle does not return to the initial differential pressure reading before the relief valve discharged, open the test kit low control valve to re-establish the initial differential pressure. Next, reclose the low control valve and take the differential pressure reading. RPZ first check valve differential, 5 PSID or greater. If the differential pressure across the first check valve is 5 PSID or greater, this is an indication that 1. The first check valve is dripped tight and the RPZ is in a static state, the condition of the downstream shutoff valve is unknown, and the check valve spring conforms to the established standard. Or 2. The first check valve is not drip tight and the RPZ is in a dynamic state, the downstream shutoff valve is leaking with a downstream demand, and the status of the spring is unknown. Note, until the no-flow validation test is completed, it is presently unknown which situation is correct. Therefore, the no-flow validation test shall be conducted to confirm if the RPZ was in a static or dynamic state when the differential pressure across the first check valve was measured and confirms the first check valve test results. If the no-flow test indicated that a static state existed, number one would be the factual statement and the test is supported. However, if the no-flow test indicated that a dynamic state existed, number two would be the factual statement. The number two results do not demonstrate the ability of the backflow prevention device assembly to provide protection. Therefore, the backflow prevention device assembly shall be retested when in a static state. First check valve differential. Suppose the static differential pressure across the first check valve is greater than 0 PSID but less than 5 PSID and water is not constantly discharging from the relief valve. In that case, this is an indication that the first check valve is holding drip tight, but one of the following is the cause of the low differential reading across the first check valve. The first check valve has a weak or defective spring. The first check valve rubber disc is deteriorating. The first check valve modular assembly is obstructed or the first check valve disc holder assembly shaft and guide have hindered the movement of the check valve. If the pressure drop across the first check valve is greater than 0 PSID but less than 5 PSID, the first check valve does not meet the industry standards and does not pass the test, but the RPZ is still providing protection. The tester shall record such and continue with the testing process. Note: The relief valve would discharge if the differential pressure across the first check valve was 0 PSID and there was no downstream demand. This presentation was produced by Jimmy Backflow Productions. This presentation is the first of several that will address analyzing other aspects of the testing process for backflow prevention device assemblies. For CEU credits and certificates of attendance, go to www.ceuplan.com for additional training. A printed copy of the text 
is available for a nominal fee to cover the production and printing costs. For a copy of the text, send an email to jholeva at aol.com for details. Thanks for watching. I hope this presentation helps you better understand the particulars of backflow prevention device assembly testing.